So, hi everyone, my name is Paul Gafelkopf. I'm a PhD student with uh, Offenburg University in Germany. And I'm going to present you an uh, overview of our two CVPR papers this year. So we try to analyze convolutional neural networks. Um, sorry, yeah. Uh, so maybe you have seen in the last days how they already work. So you have some uh, input image, you apply a convolution filter and then you end up with an output. And if you do this hundreds or thousands of times in your network, you can produce interesting latents that you can then further classify or do other predictions uh, with. And the question is, since there are so many filters and CNNs can be applied for all kinds of tasks and all kinds of data sets from medical to natural photos, is are there any shared similarities that you could potentially exploit? And so to study this, uh, we have uh, created CNN filter DB, which is really a large collection of convolution filters that we have connect, uh, collected. So I just went online and downloaded uh, every pre-trained CNN that I could find. We have roughly 650 of those. Uh, we made sure that they are as different as possible. So they are trained for 11 different tasks, including classification, segmentation, uh, but also synthesis tasks. And we also made sure that they are trained on different kinds of data. So we have natural photos, but also medical models. We have uh, models that were trained on infrared images and depth maps and others. So in total, 16 categories, 71 data sets. And out of those, we extracted uh, only filters of shape three times three because those are the most common ones. And in total, we collected 1.4 billion of those. So one of the first things that we have seen that there is an effect that we call degeneration of filters. Um, what you can see here is uh, a ResNet 18 that was trained on Cypher 10. And every row represents one layer, starting with uh, the first layer and the top and the first 32 uh, filters of every layer. So if you look in the beginning, it's very diverse, it has a lot of patterns, but towards the end of the model, the filters become very sparse. So they barely contribute to the solution, and you only have very, very few filters per layer that actually do something meaningful, the, other way, the, the rest is simply noise and could be pruned away. The other thing that you see is that the patterns are becoming very similar. Um, in fact, they're just differently scaled and sometimes inverted, but they do the same transformation to the input data. Um, so we tried to study this distribution shift effect in uh, filter patterns. So we basically grouped the filters by different dimensions and then compared the resulting distributions um, based on a singular value decomposition that I unfortunately can't go into details now. Uh, but the very first thing we saw is that, of course, if you take two models and you compare the filters there, they are different. Uh, but if you start to look into model families, so you compare two ResNets, for example, they are very similar. Even if they are trained on different data sets, even if they are trained for different tasks, their filters are sharing some similarities. And if you take this to other families, so you compare, for example, ResNet with BGG, then filters are becoming very different again. But mm, probably most interesting is that if you take all filters on average and compare it, split it by the task, the type of data that the model was trained on, and the depth of the filters, there are barely any, similar, uh, barely any differences. The distributions are very similar. Um, and the only difference you see is typically a type of degenerated filter. So some models have more degenerate filters than others. And we have seen that this is particularly common in medical models, which uh, we thought would be uh, very interesting to explore. So if you're from the medical domain, you want to work on this, uh, feel free to talk to me. The second part I wanna quickly show you is um, the filter analysis of models that are robust to adversarial noise. And uh, one of the things we have seen in all models there is a very interesting effect in the very first uh, one or two layers, they learn these uh, thresholding filters, which are particularly good at eliminating noise from specific regions of the image. So adversarial training does not really yield intrinsically robust models, but they actually learn to cheat a little bit. They uh, cut away uh, the noise in the beginning, and then they just process the cleaned image. So thank you very much. These are the two papers if you want to read more and uh, feel free to reach out for me if you're interested in collaborating.